going to put it on the bottom of the date, right click and paste it, one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to add them up. So in order to add them up and flip the sign, make it a negative number, I'm going to say negative of brackets, the 30,000 plus the 68,000 plus the 120,000 brackets. So all I'm doing is just adding up the 30, the 68, the 120, then making it negative. So that's a negative 218,000. If we credit something 218, we're going to have to debit something 218. I'm going to do that with a negative of this number. Take that number, flip the sign. You could just type in a positive 218. And what's that debit going to go to? And you might say, well, we paid for labor. That's payroll. Payroll. We know that payroll, usually, if we think about the past uh, problems that we've taken a look at, payroll goes to payroll expense, usually. But in this case, we paid payroll for the people's work to make inventory. And that's the thing we got to kind of wrap our head around when we start talking about inventory, because a lot of people just start to think about things like payroll and utilities as expenses inherently in and of themselves. But the only reason they're expenses is because we have consumed them in that time period to help us generate revenue. In this case, we didn't consume the wages to help us generate the sales in this time period. We paid for the wages to help us to generate uh, inventory, these accounts. So we need to debit not an expense in this case, but an asset, that asset being the inventory, more specifically the inventory that's not yet done, that being the work in process. So work in process has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to put that in C C10, right click, paste it, one, two, three. All right, now I'm going to make this a bit smaller. We're going to post this to the general ledger. So I'm going to make it a little smaller so we can see the general ledger. I'm going to scroll over here so that we can see more of the general ledger as well as our journal entry. Work in process is here. Work in process is here on the trial balance, fourth account. Work in process is, is um, over here on the general ledger, fourth account. We're going to scroll down to the next transaction in U10. So U10 equals that 218. That's going to bring this balance up to 651, which we can also see on the trial balance. We will then post the cash. Cash is here. First account on the trial balance. First account on the GL. We are in the credit side, R9 equals, and we're going to point to that 218. That's a credit cash has a debit balance bringing the amount down to 200 which of course we could see over here as well now we have affected once again the work in process area we need to back that up with the cost sheets as well by job and you'll recall that by job we have the uh, 14 15 and 60 broken out in this way so we're going to post this 118, breaking it out into the uh, 30, 68, and 120 in accordance with these three jobs. So let's scroll all the way over here again to our job cost thing where we have our three jobs. Those three jobs being the 14, 15, and 16. As of the, uh, what is it, the 12th, 112, we, I'm going to scroll over to the direct materials column now and break it out in accordance to what we were seeing in our data. So 30,000 of the payroll is going to this this job. And you might think, well, aren't we're gonna expense it sometime, aren't we? Well, yeah, when we sell job for uh, 14 or when we complete it and or when we sell the inventory related to what is being made in that job in the form of cost of goods sold. That's how we'll expense it. So then when we have the, we have 112 over here and in column uh, uh, AO, but also in the direct labor column, we're gonna put the 68,000. So we're going to increase uh, that job and then we're going to scroll down here to job 16 on 112 and in the direct labor column we will include 120,000. Notice that, that the payroll is not being allocated uh, evenly here. Obviously in this case we would actually know wh where uh, each employee worked. Why? Because hopefully when we, attract, when we track the payroll we uh, are recording which jobs these individuals are working on. Uh, when we move to the overhead, that will not that won't be the case, and we'll have to figure that out. But we can now see that the jobs add up to this 651. That 651 is also seen on the general ledger and is also seen on the trial balance. Therefore, we're looking good there. Going to bring it back up in the taskbar to 100%. Scroll over to the left and see what we have next. Going to skip a line. We are now on 116 where it says 
uh, applied factory overhead based on predetermined overhead rate uh, of direct labor. All right, so here's the thing that usually people get a little bit uh, confused on, and that's going to be the overhead. So what's going to happen with the overhead is that uh, overhead is going to include a bunch of stuff that we're going to include in there, including down here, we'll, we'll apply this stuff in there later, which is the indirect materials, uh, factory utilities, factory rent, depreciation on the factory. If you work any kind of book problem, anything that says basically on the factory, if you're working a uh, job cost or a process cost, then that's part of overhead because these types of things, and th some of these things, again, are some things that people just in just have ingrained in their head that they should be an expense. For example, utilities expense. I mean, utilities. <laughs> we usually think, a lot of people are just going to say, I hear utilities, that should be a debit to utilities expense. But that's not necessarily the case. If we're paying the utility bill because it helped us generate revenue in accordance with the matching principle, then yes, it should be recorded in utility expense uh, at the time we paid it or used it. But if we use that utility in order to create an asset, such as inventory, in this case, then we need to put it in terms of the asset. It needs to be included in assets, then it needs to be expensed when we sell the inventory in the form of cost of goods sold. So uh, for anybody that has kind of ingrained in their head certain types of expenses as always being an expense, uh, you got to kind of rethink that and say, no, nah, I mean, why is utilities expensive? This time it's utilities being paid on the factory and the factory is being used to make uh, inventory. The inventory hasn't yet helped us make revenue yet. It's an asset. Therefore, that utilities needs to be included up here in inventory. Now, if you think about these things, though, if we have a warehouse and we're making a bunch of stuff in the warehouse uh, and, they're, and they're all different in size, then we can't really just take these amounts, for example, like we can't just take these three amounts, group them together and divide by, in our example, three jobs. Because remember, the three jobs are all different in size. So I can't just take whatever's in overhead and, and divide it out by the number of jobs. And we also can't apply the utility directly to a job. I don't know how much of the lighting of the warehouse we spent on any particular job. So then the question is, how are we going to allocate utilities to the jobs? I know that we need to, but we can't do it evenly because the jobs aren't evenly sized. And we can't apply it directly to the jobs because we have no way to do so. So we're going to arbitrarily do it in some way. Bigger jobs should get more of the overhead. Smaller jobs should get less of the overhead. How are we going to do that? And we're going to use some kind of cost driver to do that. We're going to say, how do we know if a job is one job is bigger than another job? One way we might say, we could say, well, if one job takes more labor hours than another job, then that's how we're going to decide how big each job is in relation to each other. That's what we're going to do in this example. Uh, we could also, if, if something is very machine,